A very good morning to both of you. Adam, let's pick up on that point that John Cookson raised just now. He's absolutely right because there was a lot of talk about the voting system and whether we could actually ditch the, 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 what, the first past the post system in favour of an alternative. But it, on the strength of what has happened so far, how the British public has really expressed itself, do you think that idea is now dead? Yes, dead, and thank God for that. I mean, that idea was discussed in the last parliament, and people rejected it. And you are absolutely correct. Uh, we journalists made the song and dance of tactical voting, and as you correctly said, it didn't happen. People, you see, the smaller parties, the single-issue parties, they appear bigger than their size on a television debate because you get sort of the viewers there discussing a bigger issue. When it comes to constituency issue, on the doorstep is actually how much council tax I'm paying. Is actually my property going to be a mansion tax or not? Uh, is the bank going to lend me for a small business or not? Well, I trust George Osborne and not Ed Boards. And these are the issues that actually count, not the single uh, party, a single uh, issue parties. Mm. Although, interestingly enough, the Greens and indeed UKIP, they have actually tried to push themselves as being more than just one trick pony parties, especially for UKIP, because that was the accusation that was always levelled against them. In their manifesto, they said, look, we've, we've tackled immigration, we've tackled the economy, we've tackled the environment, and above all, it has all been costed. Well, it's, be, it's been costed. I think they, they, they increased the, their share of the vote, especially in the industrial area, the heartland of Labour in Sunderland and up in the north. I mean, the Greens actually confused the issue. I mean, some of their policies just didn't make any sense whatsoever on housing and all that. But I think the UKIP, they... Had they only linked uh, immigration with the uh, with EU and left it at that, that would have been better. I think Nigel Farage went too far and then accused of being nasty, of being racist, and so on, and that played against him rather than focusing in the economics and in EU interfering in our lives and link immigration slightly to that rather than focusing on immigration. Yeah, because we've still got to get that result from the seat that uh, Nigel Farage is contesting, haven't we, Sarah? And it's also worth putting it in context that he has said that if he doesn't win that seat, he's going to resign from the leadership of the party. Yeah, I think it's also really important, though, to bear in mind what, what John was pointing uh, out there in front of the House of Parliament, which is that actually when you look at the uh, vote figures, the, the UKIP are, are thought, and I think it's actually going to be slightly higher than 11 percent. I think it's actually going to be about 13, 14 yeah, percent of the national was what was quoted, yeah. of the national vote. So I mean that that is actually for for a new party coming in that those are big figures. Mm. But it's translating it into something well, tangible. I mean, they didn't uh, actually. Well, they haven't gone beyond one seat so far. UKIP losing out in the first past the post system in this case. But if you actually speak to uh, UKIP members, what they'll tell you is they've got a, a much longer term plan. They've got a, 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 an eye on 2020. Uh, so in in terms of you know the, the voter breakdown, that is, it's significant developments. But of course, the big story of the day is the SNP. I mean, how amazing is, is that? More than 50 seats, uh, mm. just an outstanding result. And that was interesting, wasn't it, Adele? Because the early polls, they actually said, oh, they might get 20 seats, they might get 30 seats. And again, you had one one other major poll, probably about two or three weeks ago, which said actually we're looking at an absolute bloodbath here. They could pretty much rip the the, 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 the floor from under Labour's seat. That's exactly what they've done with, with, with the one Labour M MP who's still there, who held on, only just. Well, they did very well because, again, per capita, in Scotland, uh, every Scottish citizen have got much more than any other citizen in the United Kingdom. So they did very well on services, on, the, on hospitals and school and so on. But the second issue will be very interesting in Parliament because that's going to strengthen the whole idea of English MPs voting on English laws and excluding uh, the uh, Scottish, Scottish MPs. Uh, MPs. While it might actually appear that uh, strengthening Cameron's hand He's got a lot of fight on his hand with backbenchers, mm. uh, the right wing, the Eurosceptics, because he could, in the last parliament, he has been using his coalition with the Lib Dems to actually, as a cost, to quieten and, and the whips would beat the backbenchers on the head because he's got the Lib Dems. But now he does not have the Lib Dems. He has to give way and he has to do a lot to mm. convince them uh, on actually at least what kind of message sure. on the eve of the European uh, referendum. Yeah, let's stay with Scotland because there is a rather... Uh, oh, I'm afraid we, we can't pursue this. We will later on because there's plenty more to talk about. But for the moment, Sarah Adels, thank you.